Hey everybody, it's Jasmine and happy 2022. In today's video, I have a tutorial featuring all of my 2021 makeup favorites. I am so incredibly excited to talk a little bit more about like some of my favorite products, but then also just guide you guys through my makeup routine and show you guys some things that I've just been really loving as far as like technique or just product formulas. So I hope you guys all enjoy this one and let's go ahead and get started. Before I even slather anything on my face, I wanted to preface that with these videos, I always feel like I just accumulate all of my holy grails, period. Um, and a lot of the times, like my holy grails are the things that I've been using for the past three, four years, which you guys already are well aware of if I bring it up. Um, so I'm going to try and be a little bit more versatile in this video and to kind of mix it up with like second favorites or things that I just purely liked within the past year. Um, for the primer though, I didn't really find another primer that I absolutely loved. I have a lot of primers in my collection that I do like, but my holy grail in general, that's always going to be a holy grail is my Touch and Soul No Pore Bloom Primer. You guys know her very well. I'm just gonna take one pump and spread it across my face. This primer just makes my makeup look stunning all day long. I think it's like the perfect consistency for my preference. It's like this moussey consistency. It is a silicone based primer. So if you are allergic to silicone, you might enjoy their Icy Sherbert one a little bit better. But this right here has always been my holy grail and it will be for the rest of time. I just love it so freaking much. I do have a coupon code for the Touch and Soul website if you guys do wanna save a little bit of extra cash. It is That's So Yin at checkout. I also need to film a video recapping my 2021 project pan list and on that list was actually this foundation from Tarte. This is the Face Tape Foundation and this one's in the shade Light Medium Sand. Amazing. One pump for my full face is literally enough, which is why it's still in the bottle. And I would have finished it up if a little bit didn't go a long way. Now this did actually go on sale on Ulta, but when it was going on sale, I actually just received the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation, and this is in the shade Four Warm. And this is another stunning foundation. Just this year in general, I think I've really been loving Charlotte Tilbury as a whole. I just think that some of the complexion products really stand out to me and even with the mask I noticed that my face just literally looks flawless um, so I have been alternating between these two foundations within the past year however I do think that this is just a little bit too light for me so I will have to mix it um, so I guess for the purpose of this video I'm gonna go in with my Tarte face tape since it matches me a little bit better than Charlotte Tilbury but I will be implementing more of the Charlotte Tilbury brand within this video so here we go, one pump. That's it. For my whole entire face to be like medium full coverage, it's so beautiful. Usually for my foundation application, I always just apply it with my finger. That's just how I've always done it since I've started makeup. I don't know, every other way, any other technique, I just, I don't know, I just can't get by it. It's just not for me. Um, so I'm definitely a finger gal and then blend it out. I go through sponges quite frequently because I do like to cycle through them every three months. This one is actually from a BoxyCharm box by the brand Araceli. So what I do with the rest of the foundation that's on my hand, I will just scoop it up with a sponge and then just blend it straight into the skin. I really like the Tarte Face Tape foundation because of the coverage. I just like shape tape in general, and this definitely gives it to me. I love the coverage that it has. I love how seamless it blends into the skin. It doesn't look too drying, but it's not too dewy. It lasts on the skin for a pretty long time, even if you don't set it in with powder. And I think overall, this is just like a really good solid foundation for me. If I need more coverage, then I could add more, but one pump is literally perfect. And I think when you have a foundation where a little goes a long way like that, I just think it's worth the money. There have been two concealers that I've been vibing with within this past year, and it's these two. Okay, I legitimately think this is like the same product in just different brands. I just think so. Um, the applicators are pretty much the same. The colors are pretty much the same. 
formula is the same, longevity is the same, and it's around the same price point. Okay, so um, I have this one from She Glam, and this one is the 12 hour full coverage concealer in the shade Madeline. And then I have this other concealer from the brand Clap O Claps, and this is just called the Correction Liquid Concealer in the shade number two. Um, so here's what they look like. I think that this one runs a little bit more yellow, but like blended out, honestly, it doesn't look that different. So you know what? I'm just going to go in with the Clapo Claps one since I feel like in most of my videos, I think I have done the She Glam. So I am going to apply this under the eyes. Lately, I've only been doing like this area under my eyes because I noticed that when I do my makeup and I wear my mask, I don't really need to do like the whole under eye area. I also make sure to apply a little extra on the nose and chin just because if I wear a mask, I want to make sure that that area just sticks in place. Um, so I just do a little bit extra. I let it settle for maybe a minute and then I will proceed with the blending. It's just so full coverage even though you use so little and it doesn't look cakey whatsoever. I mean, obviously full coverage can tend to look a little heavier, but it doesn't look like I have dried out skin at all. And it could just be because I have a pretty intensive skincare routine as is, but just looking at everything all together, it just looks so beautiful. Um, and then what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the rest of the product on my eyelid just because I don't really do eyeshadow primers a whole bunch. That stuff is very optional for me. Normally I just do my concealer on the eyes like with whatever is left on my sponge and that usually just does the trick for me. I've really been loving the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Complexion Perfection Micro Powders. I have the shade 1 and 2. 1 is fair, 2 is medium and I usually do fair under my eyes. I know it looks really light, but I think it blends into the skin beautifully. And then all over my skin, I will apply medium. So when I powder under my eyes, I like to look up into a mirror and I will literally just pat it in. I like to make sure that I am not dragging the foundation or concealer. Um, so patting is definitely the way to go. And then once I finish the under eye, I will take the same powder and then pop it onto the middle of my forehead, the nose and then the chin. Remember, we're trying to set those in place so that if we do end up wearing a mask, it just stays put. And then for the rest of the face, I will take the shade medium, like I said, and then I will also pat this in. So I did take um, a little bit of a different brush. This one is a little bit more um, larger in size. This one is the Real Techniques Expert Face Brush. You guys have seen me use this for the past like couple of years, so nothing really new here. Um, I like to just pat this in with um, any powders really. I think this brush really goes good with like foundation application, like liquid foundations. It goes great with powders, bronzers, blushes. Like this is like one of those drugstore brushes that I think everyone needs because it's just like you get your money's worth. Before I move on from face powders, I really want to mention the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Foundation, and this is in the shade 290. Such a good face powder. Now this is actually the one that I use to touch up, and I never used to bring powders with me to touch up because I always thought that was so extra. I know, I know, I thought it was really high maintenance, but the more I started like wearing my mask and like, you know, wanting to wear makeup outside of the house, the more I realized that, yeah, I do have to have some type of touch up because you just never know. I bought this on a whim and I honestly hadn't heard a lot of people talk about it. So I was just like, you know what? I already know my shade in the foundation. Let's go ahead and try it out. And I did. It's amazing. It's really, really good. So easy to touch up your foundation. If you cry, and you get those tear marks on your face, this really, this really does the trick, okay? Like this really covers it and it just blends into the skin beautifully. Um, if you do have troubles finding your foundation shade within the Fenty line, I do highly recommend getting Color Match because I think it's a lot easier um, to have somebody else do the work because I know when I was trying to find my own foundation, it took me a couple of tries before I found something that actually matched me. 
For the eyebrows, I haven't been completely wowed by any other brow product. Um, I'm still using my Shop Masse Slim Brow. I just ran out of it. I've already gone through one of these eye pencils from Real Her. It's really good. I just feel like eyebrow pencils to me are like whatever, unless they're really, really waxy or they're really, really stiff, then I just don't like them. But I think nowadays, I think brow products have just all worked pretty much the same. Um, so I'm just gonna go in with my Real Her eyebrow pencil. This one is in the shade I Am Inspiring. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna show you in depth on how I do my eyebrows. My eyebrows aren't the best, um, but I could make them look pretty nice. And also I haven't been paying much attention to my eyebrows now that I have bangs because they get covered anyway. So normally with my eyebrows, I start in the middle here, and as you see, I brought it down, and then I bring the color in just a little bit into the front. That's when I take the spoolie, and I will brush up from that line that I created on the bottom. Brush it up and out, back towards the tail of the brow. And you just wanna keep on doing this and keep on doing it until that line disappears. You wanna make sure it all flows together. And if you feel like you need to add more product, then go ahead. So I'm just gonna go in with upward strokes and I'm just going to make my brow a little bit fuller. There you go, yes. My brows look really, really dark, and that's just because I don't have any bronzer, no eye makeup, it's just brow. But once I have everything on, it's going to look even. I promise, I promise. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna clean up a little bit of my brow with a little bit more concealer. So I am going to just dot a little bit right in that arch area. I will take a flat brush like this, and I am going to outline the underside of my eyebrow just like so. And then with whatever is left on that brush, I'm gonna just drag it down the tail of my brow from the top. And this is just to make sure that it just looks nice, sharp, crisp, like a Krispy Kreme donut. Really weird side note, but I love maple donuts. I still love my Benefit Gimme Brow really good brow gel. But lately, for some weird reason, I've been liking clear brow gels, so I've been gravitating towards the Anastasia brow gels. I'm gonna use my mini one because I'm trying to use it up. And this smells like straight up chemicals, but I think it makes my eyebrows look nice. Is it good for me? I don't know. Some of you guys might kill me, some of you guys just might not care, but we might be doing another brown smoky eye. I know, I just feel like this year was my year of brown smoky eyes. And I know I do it so often, but there's just something about it that just sparks joy within my soul. Um, so a lot of the palettes that I have here are all nude. I did toss in a color palette just to spice things up a little bit, but I'm gonna show you my top three palettes of the year, and then I'm gonna show you my fourth. Um, so top three are these small boys. Yes, I've been liking smaller palettes. Isn't that crazy? Crazy, I know, I know, I know. So the first one that I wanna mention is this palette by Hold Live, and it's called the Red Velvet Honey Eyeshadow Palette. The number is 604 on the back and it looks like this very boring i know um and it's just it's what you expect it to be you know when i did get this in the mail i was thinking hmm it doesn't look that enticing like some of these browns look you know a little too orange some of them look a little bit too pink like i was looking for a very brown neutral palette but on the eyes and when you're in a rush these shadows blend out beautifully and i like the fact that there are like some golds in here that can definitely work on my eyes and these are definitely like the shimmer tones that i normally go for anyway i figured out what i'm doing it's great it's awesome so it's actually very easy um the base of the eye look is very very simple the only thing that's difficult is the colored liner um and 
when I show you it, it's not even going to be a big deal in case you are a beginner and you guys are trying to learn how to do something very colorful and vibrant, but semi wearable. So we are going to go ahead and start with the Dose of Colors Baked Browns palette. We are going to go into the second shade and that is going to be the only brown that's going to be on our eyes as a base. So what I am doing here, I am just going to pat this color on my eye. I'm taking that color sideways on the brush and then once that is fully patted on, I am going to start taking my brush straight on and just going in very light windshield wiper motions just to make sure that those edges are blended. With just a different brush that's a little bit smaller and is more compact, more of like an eyeshadow brush, I am just going to pack that same shade just on the eyelid just to be sure that we have a nice even coat. We're using my finger and the shimmer shade from the Kaja palette, just a light gold um, will do. And then I am just going to pat this onto my eyelid and I'm bringing this into the inner corner. And I'm stopping this color halfway, like so. Nothing crazy. I actually do have one single eyeshadow that I did not mention in this video, and that is actually by Touch and Soul. This is their Metalist Sparkling Foil Pigment. This one is in the shade Golden Tangerine. It did break on me, but this is what the color looks like. It is like a burnt orange shade, but once you blend it out on the eyes, it turns a little bit more golden. I'm applying this color directly on top of the initial shimmer shade, and this is going to add a little bit more pizzazz to the eyelid. The eye is as simple as that for the base shade. Now let's go ahead and move on to the color. With this liner to get it super, super sharp with just eyeshadow, we are going to be doing the business card method. Um, this is just a random business card that I have in my room. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it like so with a pencil brush and I am going to use it as a stencil. So the color that I am using from my Kaleidos palette is going to be like this really, really dark teal. This one is called Queen of Blades. And I'm just going to take that on a simple pencil brush. Nothing too big, nothing too crazy. And we want this because we want to make sure that the wing is only going to stay super tiny. If we take a big brush, it's going to disperse that color a little um, too much and it's not going to look like smoky, wingy. Um, I don't know. I just have to show you. <laughs> so it's a little hard for me to see because I don't have a mirror that I'm looking into, but you want to firmly press the card down to the skin and really get the outer corner area. You don't want to follow through all the way down because we could perfect that line with a even smaller brush, but we want to make sure that once we remove this card, we get a nice wing. You know, for doing that without a mirror, it actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to show you how I usually fix this and make it look a little bit better. So with the same brush, we are going to go back into the palette and this time we're going to take a lighter blue. This one is seven of nine. And I really like this shade because it blends into the teal without being too extra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look down into a mirror and as you see, it's already a little faded right there. I know such a small area, sorry. Um, but we're going to go into that area where it's already faded and just blend it in a little bit more. I'm holding my brush at the very end so there's less pressure on the brush and I'm just going back and forth ever so gently. And then with a simple angled brush, I'm going to just detail this line. So I'm going to sharpen out the end. I'm going to uh, make sure both sides are even. And this is just like the nitty gritty part. So this may be different. You may not have to even do this step, but it's definitely optional. And I like to make my fixes now as opposed to later. So this is what we got so far. The bottom of my eyes are very, very simple. I'm gonna show you guys what I do. So normally I prep the under eye with some type of eyeliner. So the first one that I'm going to go into is this really light teal. So what I like doing sometimes when I am working with these darker tones is implementing some type of light eyeliner in the mix or something that'll really make my eyes open up a little bit more. Darker colors tend to close off the eyes. So brightening it up with a lighter teal, maybe a cream shade, or even just a bright inner corner really does make a difference. 
So I'm gonna go in and just look up into the mirror and just shade this into the inner half of my eye. By the way, this one is in the shade Fresh. I can't find my black eyeliners right now, but one eyeliner that I've really been loving during this past year is actually the Shop Miss A Gel Eyeliners. This one is in the brown shade, but the black shade, it honestly gives Urban Decay 24-7 a run for its money. Um, I'm going to take this one in the outer half of my lower waterline, and I'm actually gonna take this onto the lash line on the bottom here as well. I'm not gonna do the same for the teal because once we start blending, um, you'll see that the teal only needs to stay in the waterline and not, not out of it. Remember the pencil brush? We are going to use the extra pigment that's on this brush to blend out the bottom, and then we're gonna go into more pigment and then build it up. So we wanna make sure that those blues, they don't creep down. So that's the reason why we're using whatever is left on the brush. So we're going to go ahead and look up into the mirror and then blend right over that brown eyeliner or black if you did black. And we are just going to take it, not all the way in, I wanna say like just past that middle mark, just so there's some type of blend. And then with the very tip of this pencil brush, we're gonna go back into that dark teal shade. We're starting at the outer corner and we're going to blend in. You wanna make sure that when you are working with these darker tones, that it's easier to start in the outer corner and then work your way in so that it's easier to blend out. Because I notice if you start in the middle or start in the inner corner, if you grab too much, it's kind of like game over. You're gonna to have to fix more than you should. Um, so just starting at the end and working our way in and that's how it looks like. Off topic but on topic, I am going to take one of my favorite highlighters from the past year, actually from like the past three years, the Cookie Highlighter from Benefit. I really do like this still, it's really really blinding and amazing. I'm actually going to take this into the inner corner but on the rest of the face I am going to go in with a different highlighter. So. This is what the highlighter looks like. I know it doesn't look that stunning and amazing, but on the eyes looks really, really good. I just think it adds so much pop. As far as liquid eyeliners are concerned, I still love the Shop Missé eyeliners and I've been loving these for years. Um, the Shop Missé Wonderliner, classic, amazing. My second favorite eyeliner from Shop Missé is the Artista eyeliners. I love all the colors that they have, the green, the blue, the purple, the brown, and the black, all really good. Um, but I am going to be skipping liquid eyeliner for this look. I am going to be using a eyeliner adhesive for my eyes for lashes, just because I feel like I do have an allergic reaction to lash glue and I don't know why. And that's why I don't do lash try-ons anymore because I think I messed up my eyes in the process of making those videos. Um, that's, it's unfortunate, but it happens and um, I can only use this at the moment. Um, and if I do use it a lot, sometimes I do get a reaction. My eyes get really puffy and red, um, but I love lashes and yeah. That's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, so this one is the Velour Lash and & Go, and I am going to be using the Velour Lashes in the style Flawless. I also haven't been wearing lashes, period. Um, the only lash brand that I've really been gravitating towards has been Velour since it's so lightweight, um, and it hasn't really made me feel irritated at all. Oh, and very quickly, before I even do the eyeliner, I wanna do mascara first. Normally, I know this is really backwards, but normally I would do like liquid eyeliner, then mascara mascara but because you have to work fast with this eyeliner the lash adhesive one um, you have to do mascara first so before I even go in with that I haven't really been loving a whole bunch of mascaras I think like I've just been going back to like my favorites which is like Essence Lash Princess I have my Urban Decay Lash Freak I recently repurchased the CoverGirl Exhibitionist which is really amazing I got the waterproof version but recently recently I have been liking this one from Merit, and this is like the only mascara that they have. It's called their Lengthening Mascara. I think on days where like I am not doing like anything to my eyes, this is so nice because it just makes my lashes stay up. But I think the only downfall is that it's just lengthening and there's no thickness. So it just looks like I have little haystacks 
like on my eyes like I don't know um, but it is really really good and I really like the way that it's lightweight it's not like super super inky to the point where like five minutes later if I touch my eye like you know I don't get transfer um, so I do like that about it and I am gonna use it today to apply the lash and go you have to apply the lashes while the liner is still wet so I'm only doing a thin line. I'm not going anywhere, so I'm not gonna do like any like extra on the eyelash. Sometimes if I really want these to be secure and to adhere on the eyes, I will do like another layer on the actual lash band. But just for today and for like a couple hours, I don't really need to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply like so and these just stick really well on its own and I think that it works just as well or even better than some lash glues the 2021 bronzer for me has been the kimchi chic Thaler bronzer in the shade number three I went to Venice this is such a beautiful shade I am slowly just really loving everything from kimchi chic but really in particular I love the bronzer. It is such a smooth formula. It's so easy to blend, so easy to build, and I just love this this tone on my skin. It just makes me look I'm like I'm sun-kissed even though outside just looks very depressed. I feel like when I apply this, everyone's like, "Wow, she's having a really good day today." And that's it. That's it, honestly. Um so I am going to use this today and I'm going to use it with my favorite bronzing brush, which is the Elysium Yori. Normally for bronzer application, I like to start by patting it into the skin. This allows you to also set in your foundation in this area. And then once you kind of patted it in and like really set that area, you could go in with light circular motions. And that way, no foundation is going to be rubbed off the skin because you essentially set it in already. And it's just a nice smooth base. And then with the same bronzer, I'm just going to add some to the sides of my nose. So I just usually take a random blending brush that's clean and I will start right here at the tip of the nose, kind of like middle tip. <coughs> God, I choked and now my nose contour is all crooked. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not going anywhere. No one has to know. I've tried a lot of blushes. A lot have been really amazing and a lot have been very beautiful on the skin. But there's been one blush that I have not been able to put down and that is the M Cosmetics Faded Clementine Blush. I believe I bought this for my birthday. Yes, I did, back in April. And I was saying like, yes, this is going to be like the best birthday gift I could give to myself. And I was not disappointed. It has just been everything and more. I love how boring it is. Um, I just think it looks so good on the skin. So I'm just going to apply it and let it kind of just speak for itself. It's just this soft orange glow. It has a beautiful sheen to it. I'm going to put this on my nose. So instead of using the Benefit Cookie Highlight for my face, we're gonna go in with the Illamasqua OMG Highlighter. This is called their Beyond Powder. This is so silky and so smooth on the skin. I'm just going to apply it. It's more of like a natural sheen as opposed to like blinding, um, but it just looks absolutely stunning, not only in photos, but in real life because the powder is so micro fine that it just looks like it just looks like you like you sweat a little bit you know i don't have any outstanding setting spray so i'm just going to use my holy grail which is the mana kadar hydration mist this spray doesn't really set it in it just melts all the powders together and makes your skin look more like skin um, I haven't really found like an amazing, 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 amazing setting spray. I mean, Urban Decay All Nighter is really great and obviously I use it, um, but I don't know. I just don't think any setting spray really blows my socks off. Ugh, oh, the lipsticks. I had a pleasure whipping some out for you guys. Um, so first and foremost, I have the Kaleido Sandcastle Quad. These are all various nudes. 
If you're curious about what they look like on the lips, I have a couple of videos on my channel doing lipstick swatches of these and some other sets that they do have. Beautiful. Sometimes when I'm in a real rush, I will actually use these on my eyes as a base. Um, so these ones are definitely more of like a moussey texture and they last on the lips for a very long time as well as on the eyes. This one is super random. This one is a by the brand Juice, Juicy, Juice, Juicy. Girl, I don't know. Um, but anyway, this one is in the shade V05. And this one is like a red and brown. It's really pretty. It's definitely more of like me wanting a pop of color on the lips, even though it's like not too intense. I don't know. I just think it's very, very pretty. Again, with that moussey texture. Really been liking that. Um, I found a dupe. For MAC Naturally Transformed. Can everyone give me a big round of applause? Yes, thank you so much. I really do deserve it. Um, I have spent years trying to find a dupe and nothing has prevailed aside from this one and this one only. Um, this one is by Colored Rain. It's in the shade Butterscotch. The only thing that I don't like about this, the only qualm that I have about this is that it's a little sticky. And MAC Naturally Transform comes in a bullet, so it's very soft and smooth on the lips. But the color is probably the most similar that I have found, even despite the texture difference. Um, I can get away with the stickiness by just blotting my lips really fast after I apply it, um, and then it'll be gone. Um, but that is just another beautiful, beautiful shade. And finally, we have a lip oil. I am not a glossy gal at all by any means, but I really do like this one by Merit. This is the Tinted Lip Oil in the shade All Natural. And I really, really love just how pretty this is. I think on my natural lip, it looks like my lip but better because like my lips are a little bit pink. Um, but it definitely can ruin the vibe sometimes just because I feel like personally I'm not somebody who goes for something very bright and vibrant and sometimes this can be a little too bright and vibrant for my taste but it's very nice and hydrating so that's the reason why I reach for it. I'm gonna spice things up and I'm gonna go with the one from Juicy. Girl, I really have no idea. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just apply her. I don't think I want to do a lip liner today but who knows. Just using my finger to diffuse the shade and not make it look so crisp. Cute, cute. I love pairing like some type of blue with some type of orange. It's my favorite color combination. Okay, it's like so chef's kiss. It's like when I mesh purple and greens together. It makes me feel like a sexy Barney. I love it. Um, so this is what we got going on. I'm going to go ahead and style my hair and I feel like that'll really tie everything in together. All right, you guys, we are completed with this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am honestly really excited and I filmed this part of the video like a million times already, but honestly, like I don't even know what to say because I've been off of YouTube and I feel like there's so much going on in my personal life that it's just like, wow, do I just like spill the beans like all right now? Because like, I don't know, like sometimes I feel like I owe you guys like an explanation of like where I've been, but like truthfully, truth be told, I've just been at work and I've been like dealing with like certain stuff on the side that I don't really want to get into because um, that's energy I would like to leave behind in 2021. Um, but let's just say this, okay? Let's just say we're entering the new year. We've already entered. We are here with positive mindsets and we are going to continue growing. Um, I noticed that a lot of my time in 2021 was spent working. There were times where I would work 12 days in a row and not get any type of break. So this year I want to have that same energy but also prioritize days off and time off. Whether that's staying at home, sleeping for like 24 hours or having a staycation, um, taking myself out to dinner. Um, I've really been also testing my mental health a lot um, with like my social anxiety. I've struggled with that literally like my entire life. And it still is a struggle that not a lot of people know about, um, but like eating by myself 
inside of a restaurant still freaks me the hell out. Um, but I am really trying to do that and um, yeah, just trying to progress in little steps. So um, there's no real like resolution that I'm getting at really. There's just like things that I just wanna kind of put out into the universe and to kind of maybe inspire you guys to work on yourselves too and to put yourself first. Um, you know, whether that's like doing your skincare every night at 8 p.m. and watching Netflix. Like, there's so many different ways self care can be achieved. And I just really want to remind you guys that you guys matter and that you guys um, always inspire me uh, because I always get like random DMs. I always get random messages from you guys. And, you know, sometimes you're just like, hey, how are you? Um, miss you and then sometimes I get random messages from like you guys saying you know I really want to thank you for like the advice you gave because it really helped me out and sometimes like you guys really like make me feel like I'm your guys's friend it makes me feel like I'm in your circle and it's really nice to feel that way um, so anyway sappy sappy comments aside thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it uh, thank you guys so much for always being here and for being so supportive and just being amazing it really means a lot to me and um, if you guys haven't followed me on TikTok, that's where I'm most active nowadays. Um, so if you guys wanna like see me and see more videos of myself, then that's where I'll be. Um, and aside from that, I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Peace out, Girl Scouts.